Hello and welcome to Bounding into Comics. My name is John Trent. I'm the founder and editor in chief at Bounding into Comics. Today I got a story about The Boys season three and showrunner Eric Kripke revealing that season three will quote explore what it means to be in America. End quote. Before we get to the specifics about what Kripke said, I'd like to ask you please hit that subscribe button if you are not already subscribed. If you are already subscribed, please make sure you are still subscribed. YouTube does like to unsubscribe people for whatever reason. And then hopefully by the end of this video, I'll have earned your like and you will give us a like and that you will share this with your friends and family and that you will also hit that bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our future Bounding in the Comics videos. With that out of the way, let's get into this story. As I said, the boy showrunner Eric Kripke recently divulged some information about what the upcoming season three of the Amazon Studios series will be about. Kripke discussed the show with Deadline, where he not only talked about the show's production and its COVID protocols and his experience as a showrunner, but he also delved into what the show will be exploring in its third season. Specifically, Kripke discussed what the show will explore through Jensen Ackles' Soldier, Soldier Boy character. Deadline's Matthew Carey asked Kripke, quote, I... I doubt you want to divulge any season three spoilers, but maybe you could talk about your goals for this season as you get to work on it. So this is in the middle of production of season three. Uh, Kripke responded, quote, we've been certainly a political and satirical show. We were really interested in exploring both the recent history of Vought, the company in the show, but also through that the recent history of the United States. Not sure if there's a spelling error or not there, but that's what it says in the Deadline article. Uh, Kripke continued saying, we got really interested in the myths we tell ourselves to feel that we're righteous, really exploring America itself as a myth. He then went on to detail that they will do this through Soldier Boy and flashbacks to World War II. He explained, quote, a big element of the comics actually are flashbacks to World War II in Vietnam. I always really, I always really loved it because you got to see how the superhero phenomenon didn't just affect the present, but how it affected parts of the past as well. And so we have this character, Soldier Boy, played by Jensen Ackles, and he's been around since World War II and was the first Vought superhero. Through him and through his story, we're able to explore a lot of the history of the country, really. I'd say in previous seasons, the boogeyman for you to be scared of used to be the terrorists are coming to get you, and now it's sort of metastasized into, I think, a much more ominous your neighbor is coming to get you, and that's scary to me how politics are turning us on each other. He then concluded, so we want to explore what it means to be in America, really. Interestingly enough, Kripke was one of the people stoking the fear that your neighbor was coming to get you while he was promoting season two of The Boys. He specifically promoted it based off of race. Back in August 2020, Kripke was asked by Screen Rant, quote, in season two, there's the super villain terrorists all over the world that have been activated by Homelander. However, you never really get the sense that they're more dangerous than their creators. Can you talk to me a little bit about that dynamic? This is how Kripke responded to that question back in August 2020. He said, yeah, it's a great question. We were really interested in exploring the idea of authority figures, getting the public really riled up with xenophobia and racism. But ultimately, the most dangerous people are the white dudes standing next to you. We wanted to reflect that story. So the supervillains are, in a way, a misdirect. So just looking at that answer <laughs> to August 2020, he's literally writing a story about himself now because... <laughs> He's saying now that he wants to talk about a story that is much more ominous about your neighbor is coming to get you and that's scary to me when he was literally the one saying that he was telling his story about your neighbor coming to get you because that's what he, how he saw the world. It's just utterly insane. It's just crazy, crazy talk. Still in this interview in 2020, he would specifically point towards Donald Trump and Republic Republicans claiming the show is a parallel to the travel ban and President Trump's immigration policies. He said, we wrote it at the time of the travel ban. If you remember the caravan that were, quote, going to come over the border and our word, all the white women. Uh, I don't know if that's an actual quote. I don't think that's an actual quote. I think that's him creating a quote. Uh, he's just trying to demonize President Trump there. Uh, but he continues saying, we were in that world and the way that authority figures were drumming up fear in these outsiders was disgusting, frankly. 
almost like you're saying that the white dudes next to you are the most dangerous people. That's pretty disgusting as well. It's amazing that you can say that just uh, a paragraph, <laughs> just like a couple sentences before you say this. I mean, the hypocrisy is just off the charts here. The contradiction is off the charts. The fact that you can live with that cognitive dissonance is just, it purely amazes me that people can live this way. But uh, he concluded that answer to Screen Rant saying, and so he wanted to reflect that story, which is Vault and the superheroes and Stormfront are really drumming up quite a lot of fear about these supervillains when in reality, Homelander and Stormfront are the real threat. So, um, again there, he was saying the white dudes, but then he goes on to point out that it's not just a white dude, because Homelander is a guy, but Stormfront is also a white woman, so he's basically just saying white people are the real threat. While Kripke claims it's the white dudes standing next to you that are the most dangerous, only three white men were part of the seven in the first season. They included Homelander, The Deep, and Translucent. Translucent was killed by the boys, and The Deep was kind of sidelined. He was like put on probation in the first season. Uh, the rest of the team was Black Noir, Starlight, Queen Maeve, and A-Train. A-Train is a black man, and both Starlight and Queen Maeve are white women. Black Noir was revealed to be a black man in the second season when Maeve force-fed him an almond joy. So it's really interesting that he was putting this all on uh, white people when the show literally opens up with A-Train murdering Huey's uh, girlfriend that he's about to propose to. So, yeah, that's that's just... I just crazy, crazy talk uh, from Kripke there back in August 2020, and he's back at it again here promoting season three. Kripke would double down on his show being a metaphor about President Donald Trump while speaking with Deadline about season three. Uh, Deadline's Carrie asked, one of the most remarkable aspects of the show is how you take on contemporary social issues, authoritarianism, and celebrity, for instance, which we just lived through for four years. How are you able to somehow explore these timely issues through ostensibly a kind of unreal world. So uh, Carrie's obviously asking a loaded question there, referring to President Donald Trump uh, there, those four years, that's obviously what he's referring to. Uh, so, it's, so with that said, Kripke responds saying, part of it was I do admit dumb luck because all good genre is a metaphor for something. I happened to stumble into this great job that had the perfect metaphor for the exact second we're living in. I've been waiting my whole life to stumble into something that hits the zeitgeist bullseye, and I don't take for granted that I finally found one. I guess maybe he did stumble into it, but I don't think Garth Ennis and Derek Robinson, who created it, <laughs> stumbled into it. Uh, they specifically created it for a purpose. It's clear it, the, the book is clearly uh, a, sa a satire and a parody and is meant as social commentary that is... Uh, abundantly cleared and it's not just on the superhero genre it's it's on uh, the world as well that's it's very clear in the comic books if you've read them uh, and Kripke does does note that and it's created the book he says here part of it is just really relishing this world Garth and has created that is about celebrity and authoritarianism and social media and misinformation and how corporations present a shiny happy mask to the world when what is behind that mask is the most ruthless drive for capital. 100% agree with that. I think everything he's saying there is right on point. I'm not sure it just pertains to the four years that President Donald Trump was in charge. I think that's been happening for quite some time. Uh, and I think Garth Ennis probably thinks that too, given the boys' first issue debuted in 2000. Six. Nevertheless, Kripke added, I got handed this beautifully tailored suit and felt I just had to strut in that as much as I can. Kripke would go on to state, one thing we do though, probably even more than the comic, is we really try to hew to a very ruthlessly logical, grounded place of what would really happen, what would it really look like if soups were really real, and if you applied the complete effing absurdity of the superhero myth to the actual world we live in, where those gears grind are funny and strange and absurd. Continue saying, I love living in that sort of deconstructed space or of just simple questions like, if you were the Flash, you would be blowing up people all the time. If you were Superman and you had eye lasers, it would not be a cute little puff of white light when it hits you. It would be a horrific evisceration. Exploring all that makes the world feel more credible, but it's just great fun to break down the superhero myth that way. He concluded... So this doesn't give me any hope about The Boys Season 3. Uh, the show definitely got more political in Season 2, and the Rotten Tomatoes scores, I know a lot of people 
Don't like looking at Rotten Tomato scores. Uh, I'm also skeptical of them, especially after what happened uh, following Captain Marvel. But even even with all those changes, you can still look at the uh, season differences in from The Boys Season 1 to The Boys Season 2, looking at the audience scores. Uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, The Boys Season 1 audience score is 88%. Season 2, it dropped 10 points to 78%. So people uh, weren't as uh, hyped on Season 2 as they were Season 1. And it looks like you're getting a lot more of the same from Season 2 in Season 3. At least Kripke is promoting it the same, the, very similarly. So I would expect that audience score to probably decline even further. And my guess is we will see also a decline in viewership, although we won't really know what that viewership looks like as Amazon doesn't release numbers as most streaming services do not. But let me know what you think. My name is John Trent, and you've been watching Bounding into Comics.